Now here's a neat find. Woodpecker has been at work, probably a pillow over there. Welcome back to another Birding with Bob podcast. I'm Martha Weaver and I am joined by Bob Holt, a man of many titles. He is one of our adult education specialists. He's also a naturalist and an ornithologist, which means that you are an expert on birds, a birder. And we are here at the beautiful Wargo Nature Center. It's an extraordinary day. And we are gonna be talking in this podcast about swallows in Minnesota. So let's start out by talking about the fact that there are quite a few species in Minnesota. In Minnesota, we have six species of swallows. One of them doesn't have the word swallow in its name though. Mm -hmm. And swallows are streamlined, graceful birds. Usually you see them flying, sometimes perched on wires. Some of the guides indicate that they all have a little bit of a notched tail, but it's not very noticeable, except on the barn swallow, which has a very deeply forked tail. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed that I was found a caterpillar yesterday that is a black bird swallow tail, which has that same kind of a forked yeah. tail on it once right. it goes through the pupa stage and comes out as a butterfly. So let's talk about the species in particular. You said that there are six species in Minnesota, but one of them, again, Let's go through the different sorts okay. of species. I'll start with my favorite. That'd be the barn swallow. Okay. I grew up on farms and we had barn swallows flying in and out of the barns all the time in the summertime at least, you know, in the fall yep. and spring. And be there when we were milking even and so on. And they have that deep forked tail I mentioned. Uh, rather unique in the way they build their nest. It's a cup nest, but they can attach it right to the side of a vertical structure. I have seen that. They don't need any sort of horizontal beam no, on the bottom of it? No, they they're sometimes will use one, but they don't seem to need it. No, and they, what are they using to keep them together then? Mud? Mud, with a little bit of grass or straw mixed in. You know. Great But it's architects. mainly mud. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and they're, they're common throughout the world. Very. Uh, it's probably the most common swallow in the world. As a matter of fact, in Europe, they're just referred to as swallow. Okay. You know, and they, our uh, North American swallows spend the winter in Central and South America. Okay. The, another very common swallow is the tree swallow. Um, you see those in open places flying around. It's a, in color, it's an iridescent greenish blue back and a nice white front. Mm -hmm. um, they are insect eaters also, but will add berries to their diet in the migration times for mm -hmm. the extra energy. They are cavity nesters, so they use old woodpecker nests at times, but they've adapted very well to using the uh, bluebird, eastern bluebird nest boxes. Okay, well how come sometimes I see the nest boxes side by side then? Yeah fairly close together. They should be 50 to 75 feet apart and the reason is besides bluebirds, tree swallows, okay. chickadees, house wrens will also use those boxes. Okay. So if a pair of tree swallows comes and grabs the first of a pair of boxes, the other box is still in its territory. Okay. And so the one thing they don't want in there is another pair of tree swallows. Okay. But they won't hassle the bluebirds when they come back. So it's an advantage for the um, bluebirds to do that. Uh, here at Wargo we have 40 eastern bluebird boxes and over half of the usage is from tree swallows. Okay. Yeah, so and where do they common. overwinter? They head south to very southern part of the United States, Mexico, Central America. Okay. So. When I go to a big hardware store like Home Depot or Menards where they very often have the doors open a lot, what are the ones, those are swallows that are that I sometimes see inside the store, right? That was, well, a few years back, some barn swallows learned to fly through the electric eye oh. and open the doors. Okay. So they nested inside the building and could open and close the doors to get in and out if, it, if they weren't open. Amazing. They Amazing were. how yeah. they adapt. Yeah. How about the northern rough-winged swallow? Uh, it's so named because its feathers have a rather rough appearance. They are also cavity or crevice. Nesting birds lay four to six white eggs. Uh, usually nest near water because they tend to do a lot of their feeding above water. 
okay. and spend the winters in Central and South America. Mm, you're covering yeah. a lot of territory. Yeah. Yeah. Other species? Bank swallows. Um, bank swallows are a brown above and a nice clean white below except for a little brown necklace oh. that they have. That's kind of an identifying mark. They fly with rather shallow, rapid wing beats. Uh, you don't find them all over because they need this bank of dirt or loose gravel or sand in which to build their nest. And their, but their nest is a little different. It's more like a tunnel. Talk it's a little a, bit about that. It's a tunnel that slopes upward 20 to 40 inches. So they're going, for, they're going quite a ways into, into their, right, their yeah. nest burrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to spend some time digging that tunnel. Okay. And at the very end, it's a little flat place for the eggs to be placed on. Okay. Uh, so therefore, you don't see them all over, but where you find them, you will find quite a few of them. They're colonial nesters. In other words, they have one nest just a few inches from the next nest okay. sometimes. So they stay together. Yeah. And so an old gravel pit would be a prime place to look for them. You know. So they would definitely be yeah. in Minnesota. And they gather in flocks of hundreds before they head south, as do the tree swallows that we mentioned before, too. Hmm. And they head for Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean islands for the wintertime. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to find any of our swallows here in the wintertime, obviously, because they're insect eaters, you know, flying on the wing. When are they going to start moving? When are they going to start going? We're, we're filming this now. It's August. They're on the move. Okay. But you'll still find them around for a while, because some of those that are farther north are still moving down through our area. Here. Okay. Yeah. Another one of those colonial nesters is the cliff swallow. Mm -hmm. They have a dark reddish brown throat. And because of that, some people will say, oh, there's a barn swallow. But if they look carefully, this bird also has a white belly, a white forehead, and no forked tail. Okay. So they should be able to make the separation if you know those characteristics. Yeah. Okay. They are colonial nesters too, as I said. Uh, so where you find them, you'll find quite a few nests. Uh, in Carlos Avery Wildlife Refuge, there's a maintenance building, mm -hmm. very long building. Yeah. And there's often over a hundred occupied nests in the area of about 200 feet. Okay. Uh, so they're quite the uh, thing. And they're very social birds living in these densely populated areas, even lay eggs in each other's nests. Uh, at times. Uh, and they, then there's one swallow that actually doesn't have the name swallow in the that, species name. Right. That's our largest swallow member family, but it's the purple martin. Okay. A uh, bird with a, <clears throat> excuse me, a dark purple body, black wings, black tail. That's the male. Female's more of a grayish front with a white belly. Uh, these are insect eaters also. They are cavity nesters, but they have come to rely completely on people to provide the nesting facilities. Really? And why uh, is that? It's just the way they have adapted. They, okay. They don't, they find enough of those apparently, so, and they prefer them to what they were nesting in before. So, nope. And since they're social, people don't build a nest box. They build little apartments oh. and find eight to 12 apartments in one structure okay. and up on a pole. You know, now they were a marketer's dream for a while because weren't purple martins marketed as the natural mosquito repellent? Yes, yeah. And they do eat mosquitoes, but it's not the major part of their diet. I mean, if somebody wanted a mosquito repeller, were they more likely to get bats and other? <laughs> well, bats would eat more mosquitoes Kittles probably than, than the martins, martins yeah. Um, but it's good that people buy them because as I mentioned, they are dependent on people for putting up houses. And uh, for that reason, it's important. Plus, if you are going to put up a Purple Martin house, though, you should also be aware that you're going to have to keep away house sparrows and European starlings, because they tend to want to take those nest sites away from the martins. Hmm. It's also good to have some wires nearby for them to land on. They like to rest on those, because they don't want to sit. When you're talking about a wire, how thick of a wire are we talking Telephone about? Telephone wires. OK, and stuff clothesline. Like that. Um, not so much clotheslines. Oh. Uh, they tend to sit up a little higher too than people's clotheslines okay. are. Yeah. Um, but they uh, are, their numbers are really going down. 
It's, it's, is that because of the lack of the habitat, lack of the houses? I don't think so. Okay. Um, things that have been suggested have been weather, but that's so hard to pin down. Right. Um, people have thought maybe you were using too many uh, pesticides, pesticides to get rid of insects. Mm -hmm. There are mites that have been a problem. They get on the young ones and suck enough blood out that a few of them will die. Okay. And uh, besides that, the, the sparrows and the starlings might be part of it. And maybe there's some unknown factors that we don't have. So of the six swallow species, say that five times fast, of the six swallow species, where are we going to find most of them? Are, they, are we going to find all six species in the metro, or where are they? You can find all in the metro area, but the barn swallows and tree swallows will be the most common. Okay. The bank swallows and the cliff swallows will be common in certain areas, mm -hmm. but other than that, you won't find them flying around in the edge of the forest, for example. Okay. Um, and purple martins, I said, they are having a problem. So, but you can still find all six of them in the metro area. Right. So people should get out and enjoy the swallows. Thank you so much, Bob. Appreciate it. We're at Wargo Nature Center, and this is Birding with Bob Holtz, our adult education specialist and ornithologist. Thank you so much for watching.